Welcome to part 1 of this playlist where we will learn about OLTP and OLAP systems, online transactional processing and online analytical processing. Fact versus dimension, modeling techniques. Under modeling techniques, what we will see is the differences between ER modeling that is entity relationship model and dimensional model okay after that we will also look into the differences between database versus data lake versus data warehouse okay so these are the four topics that we are aiming to cover in this video so let's get started so this is uh, interview blog series that i used to write on medium uh, so this piece of article is taken from there itself so what are oltp and olap systems oltp online transactional processing think of oltp systems and olap system as databases uh, at first and other uh, features that are shown here will be uh, characterized around the database as a system okay so the first uh, feature is a large number of short lived repeated read write operations what it means is the queries that are fired on this uh, databases are short lived means the execution time is uh, small the nature of the queries are repeated and the operations that the query usually performs are involves both read and write operations okay fast response time the oltp systems uh, which interacts with the customer transaction has to be fast has to be like high performant highly reliable and uh, fault tolerant at the same time data is highly normalized so if you would have uh, uh, the understanding of dbms entity relationship model so the data are uh, stored in multiple tables so as to reduce the redundancy in the data so the read and write operations would be much better if the data would have been denormalized correct the oltp systems stores current or near current data it will store a snapshot of data for let's say hours or max to max a day or a week and rest of the data are is removed from the oltp system use cases are the uh, transactional systems as i uh, discussed earlier in the case of amazon as an e-commerce company whereas olap online analytical processing systems a small number of read only but complex long running operations it means that queries are not fired extensively but the nature of, of the query is complex also one thing to note is the queries are read only the queries since they are complex they take longer execution time okay. what do you mean by complex queries or complex join the data in the olap systems are modeled in terms of uh, dimensions so there will be like one fact and multiple dimensions to it if you are writing a query it would be like finding some fact with respect to a certain dimension or a multiple dimension in that case queries can involve like group by join filter at the same time that is why it is complex in comparison with the oltp database queries these are complex okay the data are typically denormalized if it would have been normalized there would have been like more uh tables and more complex queries that is like one of the reason why the data in the ol uh, olap systems are denormalized to extend that all the facts lie in the same table or lesser fact olap systems is historical data use cases can be business intelligence and analytics okay the next one is fact and dimension table the fact contains quantity values which can be measured for example like sales quantity cost 
various dimensions can be like categorical values like product information geographical information employees and customer information so if i take an example of an e-commerce so it can have uh, one sale table uh, as a fact it is fact and then it can have like multiple dimensions like employee customer it can have like geography it can have like product so there can be like multiple dimensions uh, to a given fact sales stores the factual data like quantity of uh, a product sold or the amount to be paid a discount cost of the product so on whereas product dimension can have like list of all the products your dimension can have like list of all the geographical areas customer dimension will have surely like customer information employee dimension will have the employees information and those all will be legal performing with the fact table now next is the data modeling techniques so here we have uh, er model and uh, dimension model er model it is used to eliminate microscopic relationship among data elements it is used to remove data redundancy with the help of uh, normalization focus on oltp where the data is highly normalized uh, we usually model oltp system with the er model and the data is highly normalized and disadvantage with respect to the dimension model difficult for business to understand the er model because of its complexity as we all know like there are several normalization method one two three four and so on er's model are non intuitive and not high performant on complex queries this relates to the point which I have, I have made earlier that if there are like multiple tables and if we want to aggregate data which comes from multiple tables then we will have like multiple joins and in that way it the queries can be non-performant if the data is highly normalized. One thing to note here is they serve different purpose altogether so the advantage and disadvantages are in relation with the uh, ER model and dimensional model whereas the disadvantage of one model cannot be actually the disadvantage of that particular model in its own okay talking about dimensional model there uh, primarily used in data warehouse where data is stored are stored in denormalized form comprised of fact and dimensional data as i have explained earlier fact is the numerical value that is the business wants to aggregate across multiple dimensions highly extensible in the sense that if you have a fact table you can add another dimension to it and then you can aggregate data and look for angle to get reports and then judge your business on the on top of that uh, now coming to database versus data lake versus data warehouse here this is database this is data lake this is data warehouse database uh, are oltp systems which are like customer facing systems data lake is generally a object store where we store historical data and uh, data warehouse is a business facing system which we call olap systems and this is about database data lake and data warehouse so for uh, database queries are high in number but smaller in size they serve the consumer at on many many fronts consumer can be external or internal to, a, to an organization what this means is the transactional database like they are always a uh, consumer facing but the consumer can be external to an organization like a customer to an e-commerce company or the employees itself like even employees uh, the internal systems uh, sometimes generate uh, huge amount of data let's say fraud detection so fraud detection of a transaction it is the internal team which builds those sort of systems and the data that is generated out of it are held into transactional system now coming to data lake as we have discussed earlier we cannot hold historical data into database so we need to move it somewhere and that is where data lake comes into place so uh, storing historical data into database uh, has two major disadvantages it will lose its performance this, and the second thing is it will cost a lot to hold data into database so that is where like for historical data we have data lake as a solution uh, which is our object storage and this is uh, data lake is highly flexible in the sense that it can hold a structured non-structured as well as semi-structured data at a single place okay these are uh, cheaper than storing data into database or data warehouse to achieve better performance and cost optimization the best practice dictates moving the older data from database to cheaper storage option at regular interval interval this is one of the reason there can be n number of reasons to do so okay 
So these are like two different reasons, better performance and then the cost optimization. And this is where like data place comes into place. Then comes the data warehouse. So once we have the data into the data lake, we can uh, bring out many goodness from the data. For example, we can use uh, data to build ML model to understand and serve our customer better. Okay. If it is a sales data, what we can do is we can build a reporting dashboard to track sales and inventory. Uh, we can't do reporting on top of raw data stored in object storage. We need to first structure those data and then we need to publish those data into some form of a database so that it is easy for the reporting purposes and like it is easier right for the dashboard uh, tools to integrate with database. So the data warehouse uh, can store like law huge volume of data in the denormalized form and is capable of running uh, complex analytical queries and this is where like once you have the reporting enabled the dashboard enabled the business analyst would come and take the uh, decision to and like on how to improve the revenue margin or profit you name it let's quickly discuss the differences between database data lake and data warehouse database it is best suited for oltp and stores re recent data like day-to-day -day data it holds a structured and highly normalized data hence follows a rigid structure a rigid structure in the sense that the data are highly normalized uh, the database follows a schema on write it means that inserting on or updating any record validates the schema okay the cost of storing data in database is high since it provides high performance high reliability and high availability okay what are the cases where you see high performance if you store data in memory that is on RAM or on SSD. So a storing data on RAM or SSD are, will be like more costlier than a storing data on S yes. Oracle and MySQL are the examples of uh, databases. For data lake, uh, the features are the data lake is best suited to store historical data. The data is present in its raw format. It can be a structured. Uh, the data which are moved from OLTP systems are a structured, semi-structured like XML JSON data then it can have unstructured data that is data that comes from log or click stream it provides the highest flexibility to store the data like out of database data lake and data warehouse a storing data in data lake are highly flexible the data lake is used to get insights from huge amount of data this is used as a source of many etl jobs okay the, this acts as a source for data engineers as well as data scientists for data exploration since the data lake is generally object storage, it is cost effective. Unlike a database, data lake is a schema on reading. And examples are SDFS, AWS S3, GCP bucket, Azure blog. And also if you would have some experience in AWS or GCP or Azure, you would have seen that storing data on these uh, managed services are a lot cheaper than using database for storing the data. Coming to data warehouse, it is best suited for OL app uh, which stores historical data again but in a structured format. It is not feasible to do this with a database as storing a lot of data will cost higher. These are all repetitive things only. Uh, running complex queries on OLTP system will hamper the performance of day to day transactions as well. We take the data from database via data lake and migrate it to data warehouse to do the analytical processing okay so how it is done is we have a database then we have one etl job then we have data lake then we have another etl job then we have data warehouse so this can be like one ideal scenario the data is aggregated, joined and merged from multiple sources which are taken care of by the T of the ETL job that is the transformer of the ETL job. Okay, So the T of the transformer basically uh, is uh, used to aggregate, join and merge the data. It follows a schema on write as we have seen in databases. So data warehouse is a form of database designed in a way to store huge chunk of data they can run long running queries a storage cost is high but lesser than the database examples can be uh, teradata aws redshift and a snowflake 
it limits the flexibility but provides a lot of other goodness to the business uh, the business here is data analyst business analyst or risk analyst hi hope the video was of some value to your time i understand that the video was uh, quite simple and buggy at the same time but i had to get us started at some point at least uh, so bear with it in the next part of the video what uh, i will try to cover is the slowly changing dimension and the constants of a database also uh, i will be discussing uh, dimensional modeling uh, the snowflake scheme and the star schema also the link to the medium article is there in this description box you can go ahead and uh, bookmark those articles uh, for your further reference and uh, keep watching Thank you.